Let's analyze this truss using the method of joints. Here is the list of steps that I will take to solve the problem. 1. Calculate the support reactions. 2. Using joint D, determine the force in members CD and DF. 3. Calculate the force in members CF and FG using the equilibrium equations for joint F. 4. Using joint C, determine the force in members BC and CG. 5. Determine the force in members BG and EG, using joint G. 6. Using joint B, calculate the force in members AB and BE. 7. Calculate the force in member AE using joint A. To calculate the support reactions, we begin by sketching the complete free body diagram of the truss. There are three support reactions, two forces at the pin support and one force at the roller support. We can calculate this angle. Using this triangle, the sine of alpha equals 6 over 10, therefore, alpha equals 36.87 degrees. This angle also equals alpha. Why? Because these two angles have perpendicular sides. Similarly, the angle the other applied loads make with the vertical axis equals alpha. The applied loads can be replaced with their x and y components. The components of this load are The x and y components of the other two loads can be determined in a similar manner. We are now ready to write the equilibrium equations. Let's take these directions as positive. We need to write three equations, the sum of the forces in the x direction, the sum of the forces in the y direction, and the sum of the moments at point A are equal to zero. The moment equation consists of five terms, with each term representing a non-zero moment of a force about point A. The load of 40 kN has a moment arm of 4 meters. Given that this load generates a clockwise moment about point A, it results in a positive moment of 4 times 40. The load of 30 kN acting through a moment arm of 3 meters generates a clockwise moment at point A. Consequently, this results in a positive moment of 3 times 30 kN meters. The moment arm for this load is 8 meters. Hence, we have 8 times 20 here. The moment arm for the 15 kN load is 6 meters. Which gives us a product of 6 times 15 here. The reaction force at point D generates a counterclockwise moment at point A, given that the moment arm for this force is 16 meters. We get negative 16 times dy here. Solving these equations for the unknown reaction forces, we get. Let's revise the truss's free body diagram to include the magnitudes of the support reaction forces. We are now in a position to apply the joint equilibrium equations to determine the member forces. Here is the free body diagram at joint D. There are two unknown forces at this joint, the force in member DF and the force in member CD. The joint equilibrium equations are. Solving these equations for the unknown forces, we get. The sign associated with each force reveals if the member is experiencing tension or compression. A positive sign signifies that the member is under tension, while a negative sign indicates that the member is in compression. Therefore, member CD is in tension, and DF is in compression. Next, we examine joint F. Three forces intersect at this joint, the force in members FG, CF, and DF. Since we already have determined FDF, two unknown forces remain to be calculated. To facilitate solving for the unknown forces, I am going to use this coordinate system for writing the equilibrium equations. I choose the y-axis to run along members DF and FG, and have the x-axis aligned with member CF. Using this coordinate system, we can easily see that the only force in the x-direction is FCF. 
Since the sum of the forces in the x direction must be zero, Fcf equals zero. The expression for the sum of the forces in the y direction becomes the algebraic sum of FFG and FDF. Solving this equation for FFG, we get. Next, we examine joint C. As you can see, four member forces are acting at this joint, but only two of them are unknown. The angle that member CG makes with the horizontal axis can be easily determined using the truss geometry. Using this coordinate system for the joint, the equilibrium equations can be written as. Solving them for the unknown forces, we get. Next, we examine joint G. Two unknown member forces are present at this joint, FEG and FBG. Here are the equilibrium equations for the joint. Solving them simultaneously for the two unknown forces, we get. Next, we move to joint B. We have determined angles alpha and beta already. Since this is a 90 degree angle, we can determine angle gamma by subtracting alpha from 90. Using this free body diagram, we can write. Solving these equations for the unknowns, we get. Finally, we consider joint A. At this point, only one unknown member force remains, FAE. To determine this force, we need one equilibrium equation. We can use either of these two equations to determine the unknown force. To summarize the findings, we can annotate each member with its corresponding calculated force magnitude. Alternatively, we can write C to indicate compression, or T to signify tension next to each member force.